AJ, what you got? You gonna push me? Stop pushing, Mama. AJ, what is it? Do you know what it is? AJ, that's your new royal chair. <laughs> Which at first you're not going to like sitting in. Because <laughs> there's a lot of responsibility going to go in there. You got to sit on it. <laughs> sit on it. Sit, <laughs> sit on it. Sit on it. No, not not step in it. Sit on it. That is the right idea. <laughs> you see the little smiley face? <laughs> Are you showing us that you know what you're supposed to do on it? Huh? Here, let's see if you know how to flush. You know how to flush it? I had to put batteries in it. Oh. It should work. It's got the little trimer thing on it. Why are you trying to climb in it? <laughs> oh, you ain't going to want to get in after you do what you do to it. <laughs> here, 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 here. Look, look, look. No, 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 no. Look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he back it up. It's like, wait a minute now. <laughs> wait a minute now. That thing making noise. <laughs> Gotta put a bag up under that thing. Oh, wait, 
It's a flush too. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I'm like looking at myself. <laughs> so it senses when he when he goes and it plays a little song. <laughs> Yay! Oh, and then it tells you to flush. All right. I like this. Now you got to get up there and sit down. Go sit down. Let's practice sitting down on it again. You know, son, when there's a hole, that doesn't mean your legs go there. Look at this. That's not the right way, is it? <laughs> See, something ain't right about this here. Come in, sit down like that. Sit down. There, there you go. go. Yay. <laughs> Sorry, now I'm all done with that. All right. There you go. <laughs> AJ AJ Say remember to flush <laughs> Come on Wanna go put it in the bathroom Come on Yay! Let's go put it in the bathroom Come on Come on Let's go put it in the bathroom You gonna help me? Come on. <laughs> All right, let's move your little baby tub. Let's put your pot right there. Put it right there. Look, look, you got the big potty. Big potty, this is your potty. You sit down again? Let's sit down. Let's sit down on your potty. Good job. And mommy and daddy have this potty. Yeah. And see, we flush this one. You flush yours? Flush your potty. Flush your potty. <laughs> All right, go flush your potty. AJ. <laughs> <laughs> flush your potty. So let's move that from against the wall. Go flush. Flush your potty. Say some prophecy, please. Pee pee. Pee pee. That's flushing. You ain't pee pee.
AJ. Y'all, I am so excited. AJ just went potty in the um uh, in his potty. It was the second time using it. I'm so excited. Stay on your potty. You and PP in the potty. You say yay. Say yay. You gonna flush the big toilet? Come here. Say yay. No, no, no. <laughs> Can you flush yours? Flush yours. Flush your potty. Good job. Are you flushing? Yes, you are. Sit down. You stepping on my foot? Sit down. Come on.
Give me that. Hi. Hi. Okay, leave it alone. <laughs> Go to the potty. Go to the potty. Go in there. Go to the potty. Go to the potty. Ready to get up? Oh. Okay. So, I just learned that pull-ups don't do too well with blowouts. Um, <laughs> AJ had a pull-up on and, uh, well, I guess it really wasn't a blowout because it was really my fault. But let me tell y'all what just happened. Um, okay, so AJ had a pull-up on. And I was, you know, I've been trying to take him to the potty um, about every hour. And he was in the living room playing. I was watching TV. And he started grunting. So I was like, oh, you're pooping. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Let's go poop on the potty. So I grabbed him and ran in here in the bathroom. And he had already he had already started pooping. So then I tried to pull the pull up off of him. So I pulled it down. But when he's standing in front of the potty, just out of habit, he knows to sit down. So I'm trying to pull the pull up off of him while there's poop already in there. And he he's trying to sit down. And I'm like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let me pull this off first. Let me pull this off first. And and then <laughs> uh what happened? I think I think I bumped his leg or something, or he was trying so hard to sit down. So he ended up just kind of like falling over. And then yeah, poop was everywhere. So poop just got everywhere. It was all on his potty, all on him, of course, on his back, and then it got on his hands and then he, he took his hand and he was like, and I was like, no. So I <laughs> knocked his hand away, like, no. So I went and grabbed the wipes. Um, and I didn't even think to like, to like take the, the pull up apart on the sides. I was still trying to just slide it down. Oh gosh, y'all, I'm learning. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I just made a big mess big mess but got it all cleaned up pine's all nice and clean
AJ's all nice and clean. He's with daddy now. So that was that was an adventure. <laughs> A learning moment. So yeah, but so far he's doing pretty good with with the potty. I think he really likes it. I think he likes being a big boy anyway. He likes doing things for himself and he likes helping, so he likes it. Six weeks into potty training. Basically, I am getting to the point where I, I'm forgetting to put AJ on the potty. And so I'm definitely working on that. I'm trying to get into a potty routine with him. I would say every every five times he goes to the potty, he'll actually potty three times. So there are times where he just sits and nothing happens. And then eventually he'll reach his hand up like, okay, I'm ready to get up now. And we'll get them up. So, my questions are, and I have three of them. The first one is um, for you all that have children. How old were your children when you started potty training? Um, AJ was 16 weeks. I mean, <laughs> 16 weeks. Was 16 months when we introduced him to the potty and had him sit on and everything. When y'all saw us open the box and he started sitting on the potty. And he's 17 months now. And um, I plan when he turns 18 months to really go, you know, full force with the potty training. Um, like, do it regularly. Because it's not really regular right now. He is wearing pull-ups sometimes when I'm actually having a day where I'm really wanting to focus on the potty. So I'll have him sit on, well, I'll have him wear um, the pull-ups. My second question is, what are some strategies or um, techniques that you all have used to potty train? Um... It's 2017, so there have been billions of parents that have potty trained their kids. So this is nothing new. So I honestly, I feel like I'm just winging it and I'm just going with the flow. But all these people have potty trained their kids before. Like somebody has some idea of like, like what you do, like what strategies, what techniques. Like, I plan to, um, right now, I take AJ to the potty, um, in the mornings before he eats breakfast, um, a little while after he eats breakfast, um, after he eats lunch, and, um, after he eats dinner, and then, like, you know, sometimes in between. So, now I'm thinking of you know, starting to get him to go, like, every hour, like, take him to the potty every hour, so he can get really used to sitting and using the potty instead of, um, um, peeing and pooping in his diaper or his pull-up, so he can start getting used to that, and when he does it in his diaper pull-up, it'll feel uncomfortable, which I'm pretty sure it already feels uncomfortable, um, <laughs> So, I mean, there, there there has to be, like, a certain thing. Like, when do you take your child to go potty? Like, when? And then, like, how long after they eat do you take them to go potty? Because I'm thinking that I'm taking him too soon. Because he'll eat, um, you know, eat and drink. And then I'll clean him up. Like, you know, clean his hands, clean his face and everything. And then I'll go and take him to the potty and most of the times when I take him that soon he'll just sit there so I'm not sure if you know if that's too soon am I supposed to wait a certain amount of time before I put him on the potty after he eats I don't know y'all let me know help me out um yeah I'm also learning to sit him on the potty before I put him in the bathtub to take his bath 
because it's like as soon as he hits that water in the bathtub, he goes pee pee. And it's like, no, do it in the potty. So, yeah. And my third question is, how long did it take your kids to, um, to potty train? I've heard stories where parents have, you know, they've tried and then they had to like just take a break because the kids, you know, just wasn't getting it. I've heard stories where parents tried and the kids got it right away. I've heard stories where the parents didn't even really try. The kids just did it. <laughs> so how long did it take, you know, your kids to um to potty train? And I know every child is different. So just to give me some more ideas, to give me some, you know, <laughs> encouragement through this whole thing. Because I'm, I'm really starting to feel like, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. And <laughs> I've started something and I'm like, I really don't know. I really don't know what it is that I'm supposed to do. Now, if there's not really anything that I'm supposed to do and I just and I'm supposed to just do it just naturally, just whatever feels, you know, the best for AJ, let me know. And then that way I'll feel better about that too. So yeah, so please, please y'all answer my questions. Um, because I really, really wanna know. <laughs> I really do. I'm going to be honest with you all, which those of you that are parents, you already know this, but those of you that like, you know, see AJ or you, um, <laughs> those of you that know AJ and you just absolutely love his cuteness and how sweet he is, which he really is, but <laughs> there are times when he wears me out and for those of you that are parents you know that is nothing new and um and i have some people that are actually like you know in disbelief that he could actually <laughs> have me you know like yeah please take him go ahead <laughs> um but it's just that he's just so he's so energetic and Basically, with the state that I'm in right now with the pregnancy, it's just it's hard now. And I feel so bad about it. But on top of that, as moms, sometimes we do go through times where um, we're just we're having a hard time and everything just feels like it's falling apart. And <clears throat> it doesn't seem like it. everything is coming together. And, you know, you have moments where you start to feel, you know, like, you know, what what am I doing? What is the point and all and I know when I first had AJ um it was it was very overwhelming for me at first because as a mom you know you expect everything to still you know be in place and and it's just you you expect everything to be orderly and you want to be able to do the best for your baby and then you do have moments where you feel like you're not doing a good job or you feel like you're just you're not you're not doing the best that you feel like you should be doing and it's almost like we just we become hard on ourselves because I had everybody telling me that I was doing a great job with AJ and a lot of times, to be honest with y'all, I didn't feel like I was. I felt like, I was like, I suck as a mom, and oh my gosh, it's so terrible, and, you know, and trying to keep up with breastfeeding, and feeling like I, was, I wasn't I was feeding them enough, and so that's why I want to encourage you moms that, you know, that go through that, or you feel that way. Like, you know, and I mentioned just a few minutes ago with the potty training that I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. I, you know, I feel like um, I'm just winging it and I'm just figuring it all out on my own. But I'm reaching out to you all because I feel like, you know, y'all have done this before. So I don't have to feel like I'm having to, you know, reinvent the wheel like. I have you all that I can go to. And that's one thing I definitely want to tell all new moms and moms that aren't that new that don't realize it. It's okay to ask for help. It is so okay to ask for help. And 
I'm actually still, you know, working on that myself because, you know, I don't want to be a burden on other people, but people are willing to help. And sometimes they don't help because they don't know that you need the help. It's okay to ask for help. And it's okay when you have those moments like that. To be honest, it's normal. And it's a good thing because it means that you really, truly do want the best for your kids. And then a lot of times it just feels like a whole lot of stuff just going on. And it's like, how am I going to handle all of this? I'm going to handle the kids. I'm going to handle the kids and life. You know, life is enough as it is. And so it's now it's like, you know, trying to make sure the kids are good. And I feel like it, it feels that way whether you have one child or 10 children. <laughs> it feels that way because, you know, you as a mom, you a good mom, you truly just want the best for your kids. And... You also want your sanity. <laughs> and sometimes it feels like with life, the stresses and, you know, everything piling on with life and then children and trying to balance them, it, it feels like, okay, I don't even have time to worry about sanity. Sanity is out the window, so then you just losing your mind. But it actually can... It actually all can um, be handled. Um, I want to um, talk about something that I um, had discussed before in a Bible study group that I was in. And ever since we talked about it in the group, it's, it's always, you know, been on my mind. So every time something, you know, came up and I was going through something and it's like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this or I just, I don't feel like I can handle this. I don't feel like I can get through this. But, um, uh, let me go here. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. So, when we feel weak, that's where the grace comes in. And everything that we deal with, we already have the grace for it. So, we may approach that thing feeling like, I'm not going to be able to get through this. Or, I can't do this. Or, I, I, I'm not strong enough. I, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Or, you know, you have those moments where it's like, I can't do this. I give up. But God didn't bring us to those situations to just leave us there. He didn't leave us. He didn't lead us to those situations to just let us quit, to let us fail. So we already have the grace to make it through those situations. So we have the grace to make it through that <laughs> energetic child while you're like trying to keep from passing out and sleep on the couch and still keep up with the child that's running around all over the place and wanting to pull everything down you already have the grace to manage those 10 kids that are like all over the place also and you're trying to figure out how to how to do it all so you already have the grace to handle that I'm also going to go to um, John, John chapter 6, yeah, John chapter 6, verse 30, and, it, and I'm going to read verses 30 through 35, and it reads, so they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread For the bread of God <clears throat> is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. So in Exodus, the children of Israel, when they left um, Egypt and they were in the wilderness, they received manna. 
and it was the bread from heaven and even though they felt like they were out in the wilderness and they're like we're gonna die here we're gonna starve and you brought us out here to die lord and he gave them the manna and jesus here and john just told us that he is the bread of life so that bread is our grace they had that grace so that they could survive through their travels through the wilderness, through their stay through the wilderness. So Jesus is our grace. So when you're going through those hard times and you're feeling like, you know, everything really is a true struggle and you're feeling like, I can't do this. I don't see what the point is. When I try to do this, all I get is this. And all I get is failures. All I get is just nothing. What is the point? And, you know, sometimes, you know, we get, you know, to the extreme point of where we're just like, you know, I just want to end it all. But that's when we definitely have to, um, hi, AJ. Oh, you're so cute with that shirt. <laughs> and, um. So when we get to points like points like that, that's where we definitely have to depend on Jesus. He is our bread of life. He he is our grace. And he's our grace to get us through those hard times. And we feel like we can't get through those hard times because we ourselves can't get through those hard times. We have to depend on Jesus. We have to depend on the Lord to get through those times. That's why that's why he's there in our weakness. That's why he's our strength when we're weak. That's why when through him we are strong. So that's why when we feel like that, we have to depend on Jesus. So those of you that are feeling like, you know, just giving up or it's just it feels like it's just too much. The fact that you are still here and you're still dealing with it says that God has a purpose for you. And he's giving you the grace to get through it. So you need to go and turn to him, depend on him, lean on him. And his grace, his strength will overtake your weakness. And his strength will become your strength. And you will get through it. Because you have already been given that grace to get through it. So remember that. So, And I'm going to remember that same thing, you know, also. So... Remember that, ladies. It gets hard and, you know, we, we get so frustrated and we have so many things going on, so many things that we're trying to do. And we feel like we don't have the help. We feel like people don't hear our cry. And sometimes it's God that needs to hear our cries. So let's keep that in mind and let's keep being the super moms that we are that we truly truly are all right i think you all are of course still wondering because you've probably been watching through the video wondering about the gender reveal that i mentioned in the last video um so are we still are we still on for that date that we said mm -hmm. okay so august 13th 6 p.m we are going to do our gender reveal party and it is going to be on YouTube live. So everyone can tune in and be a part of the party. So you don't have to feel like um, <laughs> you can't make it because you have to work or whatnot. Because even if you miss it live, you'll be able to watch it later and find out the gender of baby McCutcheon number two. <laughs> so August 13th, 6 p.m right here on super mom's journey channel and i will see you all then let the countdown begin and i'm sitting here doing all this talking and i didn't even show y'all aj because i know y'all want to see aj but he's getting all dressed up and getting his teeth brushed look at him isn't he handsome with that brown say hey oh he's so cute and there go huggy he's always cute <laughs> all right well i'll see you all next week